one and all for tuning in to this inaugural stream and being part of the delightful given of, oh, hey, it's a new stream, here's our tech issues. But we're working through them. Um, so thank you for tuning in to Tales of Throsha. This is a new stream here from the Hive Collaborative set in the fantasy world of Throsha, famous from Enter the Hex, if you're already familiar with that program put on by the Hive Collaborative. Um, let's go around and introduce our cast. We have here... Me first? Sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, hi, I'm Mackenzie. Uh, I did Enter the Hex season two. I'm excited to explore more of Throsha. Should we, are we talking about our characters right now? Or Not we yet. Just, let, oh, yes. just you, just us. Okay. Yeah, but you can call me Mac if you forget my name. <laughs> Is it me? Yeah. It's you. Go hi ahead. everyone, I'm Logan. <laughs> Uh, I was in season two and three, and uh, likewise, very excited to see Throsha from a, a new perspective and a new gameplay, kind of, just classic, you know, yeah. d and nice. okay. Sean? Hi, I am Sean Hunter. Uh, I've been in uh, Into the Hex seasons one through three. I want to be an actor when I grow up. Um, but in the meantime, I really like playing D&D, so very excited as Yay. well to play with these wonderful human beings once more. I feel like you just spoke to the souls of a lot of people in that moment. Uh, it hurts, but it's the truth. Uh, hey, I'm Rhea. Um, I was in Into the Hex Season 3 for a brief period of time, and I'm just really excited to play D&D. I live and breathe roleplay, so this is like, this is like next tier level, you know? Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, we're just going to touch base with mm -hmm. Twitch chat real fast. Oh, well, I guess I'm Steve. I'm Steve. <laughs> I was important. in seasons one through three of the show, um, and I did some stuff. It was good times. And that's where I met these folks for the yeah. most part. And I'm really excited to get to play kind of a more traditional D&D &D game yes. with this table. I think it's going to be super fun. Now I'm going to touch base with Twitch chat. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, Mr. Hyde says, I miss Logan's hair. Oh, I know. It, it, it cuts deep on me, too. Right. Some days I really, really miss it. The facial hair or the, the locks? All of it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, and yeah. new me. New man. <laughs> Pour a fody on the curb. I'm not actually going to do that. <laughs> yeah, my brief anecdote about Logan is that we had a rehearsal for season four of Enter the Hex some weeks ago, and because times being what they are, people are wearing a lot of like masks and things these days. So we got out of our cars in the parking lot at the same time. He was wearing a hat and sunglasses <laughs> and a mask, and he greeted me, and I had no idea who he was. <laughs> we walked in together, and we kept making small talk. I had no idea who he was <laughs> until finally, like, Five minutes into rehearsal, he took his hat off or something, or someone addressed him by name, and I was like, that's Logan? <laughs> I really thought he was just having a bad day, because I was like talking, he's like, yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> sure. I'm like, I guess he just doesn't want to talk to someone. Sounds good. I felt so bad, because he was like, yeah, it's hot today. I was like, yep, sure is. <laughs> it was just in my brain, I'm like, who is this mystery man who seems to know me? <laughs> It'll grow back. That's lovely. Give it time. Well. So that, that's fun. Um, other things we need to cover before we kind of dive in. We've talked about this show. We've talked about the cast. Um, we want to say thank you to the Hive Collaborative, which is the establishment that is putting on Tales of Throsha, as well as our flagship tabletop show, Enter the Hex, which has its season four on January opening, January 15th of this upcoming year, which is very exciting. We hope you tune in and enjoy um, and any other, does anyone else have any announcements, things you want to shout out or promote while you're here before we start? <laughs> and that's all I will say about that. Uh, I do, really quickly. Please. If you are following me on Instagram, uh, Brass Devilfish, uh, you will notice on my story that I have some lovely character art of my character who you will be meeting very shortly. Uh, it was drawn by the wonderfully talented Garrett Olson, who you might remember from season one of Enter the Hex. He played Baldwin slash Fang. So, yeah. wonderful character. Oh, All right. Cool. So, take a look. He's, he knows his stuff and it will awesome shortly part. be taking commissions. So, yeah. it is really cool. Get it while it's hot, baby. Done. Yeah. I'm in. Garrett is really good at stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did a bunch of character art for season three of Hex as well. So if you watch the little 
trailers that we had for uh, some characters. That was all. Some of that was Garrett. So, yeah, shout out. He's delightful. I've never met him, but uh, it's now on my bucket list. Yeah. yeah. Anyone who hasn't Garrett. seen his role in season one of Avengers, you're missing out. Delightful. Oh, it was great. It's worth tuning in. To yeah. Just for him. We got blowed up. An accountant. <laughs> <laughs> the accountant warlock. It was yeah. pretty great. So great. Um. Oh, brief shout out to tabletopaudio.com who provided that we don't have any more audio issues. Fingers crossed. Um, we'll be providing some of the background sound and ambience tonight. We just want to give them credit and thank you for what they do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And there's something here about a super sneaky mention of an upcoming Kickstarter for Hex 4. <gasps> what? 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 No. Keep your ears and eyes peeled, folks. It's going to be a ride. Kickstarter. Yeah. There'll be more to come, though. Like I said, it says super sneaky mention, so that's all you get. Mm. Don't tell anyone else. Yeah, or do. I've already, <laughs> I've already forgotten. Everyone. Now that I think about it, yeah, please tell people. That's cool. <laughs> um, okay. I'm so excited! Okay. Davis. Um, oh, I'm getting hand gestures. Are they obscene? We're good? No, okay. Nice. Before we try and unveil officially, I'm going to do one thing. Bear with us. I apologize. I'm going to unmute my laptop and see if it ruins everything or if we're still okay. I'm going to talk, say something. No more hiccuping. Okay. The pressure is killing me. She actually says hiccup. <laughs> she does. She says hiccup. Okay. <laughs> I'm not hearing any terrible sounds. That is a Thank good you. sign. <laughs> okay. Guys, I'm so excited. <laughs> Making sure it's like a calm the storm. Yeah. tension yeah. just building and building. Especially how we're playing tension, in like tension, a taverny bar. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just like, gonna sit here in silence D &D for the that. next five minutes and just very, let it all. Very D &D mm -hmm. so so okay. No. People are already oh. following me on Instagram because of my shout out. That's marketing, That's nice. baby. Nice. That's brand. Is that blazer? I know. Casual <laughs> blazer. Laying down the fire I think on I all you haters. I'm gonna dial that back, oh so slightly. That's ready, mysterious. <laughs> and that's why we are friends. <laughs> One of many reasons. All right. The camp of Clan Malthior, recently reestablished and recognized by the Hexent, lay outside the city on the western coast of Throsha, known as Ilfracombe. This city became famous long ago for being the largest and most ancient library in the city of Thros in the nation of Throsha, but more recently became infamous for the giant attack that fell upon it, where the giants sailed in on their immense boats and attacked the library, unearthing the spellbook of Malthior and setting on its way the events that transpired in season three of Enter the Hex. However, that is not the story that we are telling today. Our story centers on some members of the clan of Malthior who are about to be joined together and sent on an adventure. But first, we must set the stage. So, clan Malthior, for a time, was removed from the governing body of the Hexent. The traitorous guardian of that clan, Ulthior, set off to remake the world in the image that he felt it should be in. And he used many dark and terrible magics to try and accomplish his ends. And as such, the clan of Malthior as a whole has fallen into a bit of disgrace and definitely distrust to the greater citizenry throughout all the land of Throsha. However, in recent times, Galavor and the other guardians in Deep Council have decided that it is time to reforge these bonds and reinstate the governing, governing, body, governing body of the land that was instated by Pleona herself. 
when the world itself was created. As such, Malthior, as a clan, has set up an encampment outside the city of Ilfracombe because during the raid on the library and the fear and panic that ensued, there was a great deal of collateral damage and also a deal of unrest with the citizenry. And the former headquarters of Clan Malthior was destroyed. So we begin our story with two friends walking through the encampment together on their way to the head tent where they have been summoned to meet with the current guardian of Clan Malthior. Could you tell us what one of these people look like that we're seeing? And of course, I would be hesitant to call us friends. I would more call us associates. Uh, um. Regardless, uh, my name is Poji. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a gnome. Um, you know, about this high, eyebrows out to here, long, dark hair that's going down my back, and you know, your traditional wizard's robes. I'm hosting, hoisting under one arm a large leather rucksack, and it's got little bits of paper spilling out of it. You know, occasionally I have to stop and pick up bits as they fall out. And then, perched on my shoulder, is a is a, a tawny white owl about as big as my head, also with eyebrows out to here. Aww. And uh, occasionally, it, you know, chirps in my ear before flying off again. Um, but it always comes back, no matter what. That is my dear friend Orbis. All right. Please. Uh, so, uh, keeping up with my my dear gnomish friend uh, is a handsome devil of a tiefling. Uh, long, flowing, fair blonde hair. Lightly tanned skin. Flesh-colored tail that's only a little bit disturbing if you pay too much attention to it. Uh, that is constantly holding on to an arcane focus in the form of a long silvery staff with a crescent on it. He's covered in lovely flowing silks that change every day depending on what's in fashion that season. Uh, has a rather stupid expression on his face most of the time. Uh, his name is Yuri Prospero of the Prospero clan. And uh, he is a grad student who's been, uh, who's been working with my dear professor friend here, uh, studying to become the world's greatest wizard, don't you know? <laughs> Despite the fact that he can't pay attention to anything for more than a few moments. <laughs> so that's not going to work out very well as a career path. <laughs> so, Yuri Prospero. Tiefling extraordinaire. How old is he? He's 24. Oh, a young Handsome, age. handsome young man, yeah. Yeah. So. And very well dressed. Very well dressed. Happy to share it. <laughs> All right. The two of you reach the yellow flaps of this great tent, and you're ushered inside into an antechamber where standing waiting is a man who got there a few minutes before you did. Yes, uh, you see sitting in a chair, looking everyone over very judgmentally. Uh, a human, right around late 40s, 49 to be precise. He's wearing a dark green uh, suit, but covering that suit is uh, an assortment of uh, patchwork armor and gears and gadgets. He has goggles on his head, a, a very nice, handlebar mustache. Uh, <laughs> for as clean as he might look, uh, looking at him a little bit more closely, you would notice the, the grease that he, he didn't quite fully get off of in between his, his hands, a little bit on his cheeks, a little bit on his neck. Uh, he likes to work with his hands, and he likes to work with machines. And that's when you notice, sitting right next to him on the ground is a massive steel dog. A dog de Bordeaux that is completely made out of steel and iron, and it sits there robotically panting, looking up at its master with uh, just just absolute adoration. And uh, he gives it a, a pat on the head, and then starts working on a little gear on one of his his gloves, and starts messing with some some files and some and some tubing on his other wrist. He, he's just he's covered from head to foot with. Just little knobs and intricacies, and looking uh, very pleased with himself. Um, oh, I should probably give my name. <laughs> that's, guess, that's important. Yeah. That's up to uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> you can just look at him. He goes by Baird. 
and his dog is named Boss. That's adorable. Mm. All right. The three of you stand waiting. You've all been called to meet with the guardian of Clan Malthior, who's a human woman named Java. You all know that this is unusual given the current situation in Throsha, as there is a problem with demons and devils running rampant in odd corners of the land, and the guardians, by and large, are off dealing with the greater bodies of these demons. So you know that there must be something afoot to have her here, back in the encampment, and meeting with champions. You hear voices in the back of the tent from a chamber deeper within, and then an elderly, short, human woman, as I said, steps out, short white hair, shocking, intense blue eyes, and she eyes the three of you. Well, it's about time you all got here. We've got much to discuss. Come along inside. And she turns and leads you deeper into the folds of this tent. When you enter into a larger chamber, where standing waiting is a figure who I will let describe herself. Oh, that's yeah. me. Uh, yes, you enter the tent and you see about five foot 11 wild metal figure. Uh, it looks like she has on a ratty, kind of wind-blown cloak, very unfashionable. Oh, dear. Um, it looks like she's tried to tie some sort of hair to her head, some cords, something going on there. Um, she has very plain clothing. It's worn, it's dirty. Clear that this person cares nothing about their looks at all. Um, and you also see a gigantic a uh, giant axe on her shoulder, just resting there. Upon seeing her, there is slight, most wouldn't catch it, but there is a hesitation as I take notice of this robotic figure and just, <clears throat> well now, that's interesting. <clears throat> Something to matter? Oh, uh, wasn't entirely sure that we would have, uh, the present company here this, this day. Suppose I'm surprised, too. Hello, Dolores. It's nice to see you again. My name is Petra now. It's not, yeah, never mind. It's good to see you, creator. <laughs> Pardon, uh, run that name by me again. Creator? No, the one that you gave yourself. Oh, yes. My name is Petra. Petra. Look, you've got your autonomy. I can respect that. But what I don't respect is this, this attire. What, what, what are we wearing here? I, I thought you better know. than this. No, I did not know that you would be here, but... Uh... I'll see to it that you get some proper garments on today. Well, I can do something about that. And by the time I'm finished, you'll consider yourselves petrified. Please, <laughs> please behave yourself, please. I'm going to cast <laughs> joke. prestidigitation and uh, turn her cloak a lovely purple and yellow paisley, something very suiting to the present company, <sighs> yes. It looks a bit like a, like a troll threw up on her. Yeah. Doesn't have to be quite so flashy. It's at this point that Java interjects and says, while it's deeply charming to see all of you getting reacquainted, we have pressing matters to discuss, and I have things to attend to, if you please. But of course. Java. Right. <clears throat> Thank you very much. As you're all aware, I have things that I need to attend to in other corners of the land. However, the status of our clan, while being called back out of question, is indubitably perilous in the eyes of many of the citizens of Throsha. And it is my job, among many other things, to make sure that we re-establish the honor of our name. This is an immensely difficult task, as I'm sure you're all aware. Times have not been easy for any of us for the last few years. Now that said, we have been given a task by the Hexant, 
and I intend to see it done. Can I count on the four of you to do nothing to soil the name of this clan any further? Completely and absolutely. I don't know what to soil means. I'm here to serve. I'll do what I can. Very good. Not many miles from here is the town of Kilkenny. There have been reports of attacks happening in the night. The locals are not able to give good descriptions of what it is. They are humanoid in nature, appear to be made of metal. There have been a few deaths and a few kidnappings. We have been given the honor of attempting to resolve this issue for the town of Kilkenny to put their citizenry at ease as well as to establish the goodwill and intent of our clan once more. Baird, I am entrusting you. She reaches into the folds of her robe and pulls out an envelope, which she hands to you. This is a letter of introduction from myself to the mayor of Kilkenny. It instructs him that you are indeed those that I have personally sent to deal with this issue. I know that some of you are not terribly pleased to be seeing each other. However, I trust that that will not impede your progress as this is truly important. I tuck it into my uh, dress coat pocket on the inside. Very good. Do you have any questions? This job is about protecting the town or killing the metal figures? It is most important that the citizenry feel safe and that we once again begin to build bridges of trust. I will leave the details to you as you will grow much closer to the situation than I will. I will trust your judgment. I'm new to these parts, so what's uh, the distance that we're looking at here? How many days journey? You will arrive on the evening tomorrow. And have we ident- any idea how many of these things there are? The accounts are varied, scattered, and untrustworthy. All right. Did oh. you make more metal figures like me? <coughs> let them go loose? And I let Boss come up and sniff you. What Say, is that? This is Boss. He's a good dog. Oh, he's a poochie. And he's the only thing I've made since you. Mm. So count yourself lucky. <clears throat> Come on, boy. Thank you, Java. Very well. Be on your way. Best of luck. May you fly safe on the wings of Sorios. Mm. And as the four of you are nearly departing, she calls out once more and says, I know I said to protect the name of our clan. See that you don't let anyone step on it either. And she turns. She was definitely looking at you. I don't know what you mean, but uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but I think this all sounds smashing. I've never been to this uh, Kilkenny before. I wonder what it's like. I'm sure it's just some small town that just needs help. Clearly can't defend themselves. Yeah. Any of you well-traveled around here? I've never been to the coast before. It's terribly exciting, isn't it? (laughs) I've been traveling for the last year. Oh. By myself. Oh. I distance myself just a little bit from the head and just, come on, boy. Walk with boss. I sidle up to uh, Petra and say, I feel like we'll be fast friends. I I love your your look. It's very uh, blasé and grunge, I almost say, but uh, I need something else. I can't quite put my finger on it. Uh, I'm going to uh, cast Prestidigitation once more, maintaining the other pattern on her... uh, on her cloak and okay. turn her hair a deep red. Does this help <laughs> me look less scary? It gives it something. I don't know what the word is. Mm, something. Da. Da. I like something. Okay. okay. Yes. She'll like walk and like toss her cord braid hair as she walks. That's good. <laughs> I love it. More friendly? <laughs> love it, yes. Excellent. All right. I assume that the four of you head along your way on the road to Kilkenny. Are we not flying on Sorios' wings? 
I feel like that's just an expression. Oh. I've never seen a saurus before. <laughs> Is that one? We'll point at, uh, point at the professor's uh, owl. He can't carry you. He can hardly carry me. Uh, I, I felt like maybe the eyebrows could uh, could carry one of us a piece, perhaps. You would think. Uh, I mean, they are very powerful eyebrows. Yes. Uh, take on, you know, after his dear friend, Peter Gallagher. Yes. How'd you know? Just a guess. <laughs> <laughs> Let's <right>. go. <laughs> <laughs> the four of you are walking down the open road to Kilkenny. It is a beautiful morning, early <laughs> afternoon, perhaps as you're making your way down this path, well-established, well-traveled. In the distance, you begin to see three figures beginning to grow larger, beginning to make their way towards you. And as they begin to come a little bit closer, you notice some of them wearing specific colors. One is wearing red, one is vested in blue, and the other has purple trim on her long black cloak. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Hello. As you draw closer, one of them raises a fist in greeting. It's the Krieg. They raise fists. It's what they do. Typical. Hail, friends and travelers. What's this we have here? And you see eyes begin to narrow oh so slightly as they look over you. Well, my name's Yuri. Uh, what's yours? I'm Hardock of the Clan Krieg. She has made. Hanach. That's a hard name to say. We are on special mission, so goodbye. Wait, Petra friends, wait, wait. Is it true that the four of you are all in this clan mouth you Oh, yes. And what of it? The person vested in blue, a woman, who's been looking down her nose slightly. Oh, it's just rather strange to see you all out and about in the open like this. We thought you'd be hiding under a rock or doing whatever it is you've been doing for the last few years while we've been taking care of the nation. Now, why would we do that on such a beautiful day? Oh, you're very clever. Terribly clever. I know. Right? Am I, am I clever? I, yes, you yes. are. Yes, clever. yes, I, I am. Yes, you are. <laughs> Uh, you know, because this is like a game and stuff, maybe we should roll some dice. Do you guys want to roll perception <laughs> yes, for me? Yeah! Okay? <laughs> perception. 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 Who you assume is from Veneta, who's yet to speak, looks uncomfortable at the speech that is going on. However, the woman from Arya presses on. I just don't think it's really admirable the way you've been so absent and unhelpful for the last few years. What is it you lot have been up to? You seem very interested in us, but we've already told you we have work that we need to do. So if you'll let us along our way, we'll go along our way, and then you'll see what we've been up to as a clan. It is you who are meandering down the random path. Well, it's a public road, and we're on our way to Ilfracombe to help build back up the library and see if there's any other help we can offer. We've been sent. Oh, goody, we were just there. Do give them our best. Who sent you? Why, our clan leaders, obviously. Hmm. Well, it seems like we'll be walking in the opposite direction towards the problems. We're going to kill Kenny to be helping out while you run this way with your tails between your legs. I'm going to kind of sidle up and point out, oh, I love the shade of you, the Veneta, uh, the Veneta Guardian or the Champion, and uh, mm -hmm. has a lovely shade of purple. It almost matches mine. Uh, I, I say, uh, where do you find such a, such a cloak? I, I, I bought it back in the village, and you can see that she begins to grab her coin purse I reach as you draw axe. close. Don't, no, we, we don't need to be doing any of that. This makes me feel safe. I, I suppose if, if, if that's what you need to do. The Aria champion narrows her eyes and says, typical. What? Oh, a mouth, you're trying to just exert power to claim what they think should be theirs. 
What if we trying to claim anything? Hmm. Hmm. And then Arya, with uh, with you sitting there on your mighty high cloud, looking down on the others, right? You all holy for us to more holier than thou, right? Look at you. I call it a safe assumption. <laughs> you and your gods. You rolled a 19 on your perception? I rolled a, a 16. The 19. Or 15. You were the 19 on your perception. As you stare down this person from Arya, you notice that there is a yellow tint to her eyes. It strikes you as unnatural. Mm. Well, as much fun as this has been, uh, you know, tooting our own horns and having a pissing contest, uh, we really do have business we need to attend to. Now, if you have to help with the library, I think that's very noble of you. Uh, there was a bit of destruction that occurred, and the books are very valuable, especially the one, well, especially the important ones. Uh, so we'll let you be on your way. We'll be on our way. Can I roll a, like a nature check to see if I recognize sure. what that yellow tint is? Go for it. That's not good. Not good. Uh, whopping nine. <laughs> Uh, well, you've never heard of jaundice, but even then, you wouldn't think that. Mm. So, no. It's difficult to place. It okay. simply strikes you as unnatural. Uh, I'm going to keep interacting with the, uh, with the Veneta champion. You, you seem a tad uncomfortable, if, unless I'm wrong. Uh, I said, did we say something wrong? Is there anything we can do? Well, I, I, I don't think you've said anything wrong. I'm just a bit uncomfortable with... Things as they are, and I feel that my companion is being a bit rash. And she evil eyes her Arya friend. She has a rash. Oh dear. Oh, I can fix that. Who Do has I, rash? It's a figure of speech. Uh, no, nobody, nobody has it. So I don't have to fix anybody's rash. Okay. okay. No. The Krieg, who's been resting his hand on the pommel of his sword, but in a very casual manner, says, I think they've had enough of a talking to for one day. We have things to be about. That's exactly what I've been telling you, actually, that we have things that we need to do. Yes, well, forgive me if it's difficult to trust the word of the traitor. I like you. I like okay. your Veneta friend. I like you. She's gonna point to the Veneta and be like, I think you're okay. Bye. You see this person vested in Aria Blue leaning over and whispering something into her Creed companion's ear and then whispering something into her Veneta companion's ear as well. You know we are not traitors. We did nothing. Also, we're not oblivious. We can, we can tell that you're trading secrets and trying to be coy with us. You know, I thought Aria was better than that. Not making snap judgments, trusting what people do. What do letting their actions prove their worth. And here you are insulting us, so if you're done insulting Arya, we're, we're ready to go, right? How do you know well so said. much about Arya? Well said. I've been exploring all the religions of the world, it does not matter. Oh, you've been exploring the religions and yet you still remain amongst the thieves and liars. You dare no to offense. cast judgment on all of these people. I am done with you, I'm done. What was your name, actually? Celine. I let my steel defender boss just approach her very, very closely. Just start sniffing her. Maybe even like pushing slightly, just right up in her personal space. Okay. Uh, let's have boss roll perception. I'm assuming he gets <laughs> advantage on scent based perception uh, rolls. <gasps> just say yes. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. But that is a, uh, a 14. Nice. 14 total? Good job, boss. You can correct me if my interpretations of boss are incorrect, but there is a deep mechanical noise that begins to emanate from boss that sounds a bit like a low rumble. Yeah, that's, that's accurate. That's cool. You would effectively interpret it as some the dog, dog says no, 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 no. Mm. Something off. He doesn't like your smell. 
Celine steps back subtly and looks down. Get this thing away from me. Or what? I, I think you should listen to her. I think let's let's not cause any problems now. Like she could, is not worth it. We have goals. We need to focus. And Sarzi is very clearly, like visibly nervous, kind of fidgeting a lot. And Celine reaches over and pulls out a short sword and says, "Maybe I'll cut it open and see if it has a soul." <laughs> Boss. Come here, boy. And I draw him back. Resheathing her sword. I've had about enough of all of you. We should go. And the Creed companion mumbles, they've been saying that for the past five minutes. Well, cheers, it was nice to get to know you. Hmm. Speaking nothing more, they move along their way. You see the Veneta champion look back over her shoulder and make one of those. <laughs> Just gonna, goodbye, goodbye. Be safe. <sighs> I like them. Can I uh, insight what m my dog was picking up from her? Is that. Was it just like he didn't <laughs> like her, or or did he smell something unnatural on her? Does Boss like and dislike people? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No better judge of character than a dog. Dogs should be able to identify. Well, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get a good understanding of how Boss works <laughs> and the things Boss would be able to do. So, Boss has a keen sense of smell. Is capable of smelling. Tell you what, let's have you roll insight. Okay. To see if you pick up on what boss was putting down. <laughs> if you smell what he's putting uh, down. 14. 14. Uh -huh. What do those rumbles mean? So it wasn't just that boss didn't like her, you don't think. There was something wrong with her. Mm. Okay. You should you should fix your dog. It's it's I think it's My dog is perfect. It's rumbling. Lovely pooch. I, There's something not right with that, uh, what was her name? Celine? Creator, I believe there was something in her eyes, flash of yellow. Very weird. Well, I calibrated this dog's nose to pick up all sorts of senses, and when he's off, when, when there's something not right, I trust him. And it wasn't just that he didn't like her, because I didn't like her. Hmm. There's something off. Okay. And I turn around and I look back at them. Are they just walking away? All right. Uh, I need somebody to. Um, this is gonna gonna sound a little strange. Uh, I need mm -hmm. to get on somebody's back. Here you go. Oh, all right. <laughs> that works perfectly. She's Here you gonna go. crawl up and you know. Oh, you weigh on. nothing. Okay. Oh. Never mind. But yes. No, I've been told that many times before. She's a backpack gnome. I wouldn't go so far as to calling me that, but uh, I, I suppose I suppose to each their own. Um, and then she's gonna shut her eyes, and when she does, Orbis is gonna suddenly, like, Ooh. alight and look up for a second and then just drift off of her shoulder and float backwards towards the group of people. And it's just gonna kind of do, like, a lazy circle, like, a bit above them, try and pick up on anything weird or anything like that. Cool. Okay, so perception for Orbis, then? Yes, and I forgot to get the owl stat block printed, so let Shh. me... Shit. Hey, it's... She's... Communing telepathically with her owl. It's a thing. Spiritual oh, thing. Oh dear. I wouldn't call it spiritual. But her spirit is going into the owl. Okay. No, their, their minds are connecting. It's... Mm. What were you saying, Yuri? That's a five. <laughs> so owls have advantage on perception checks right. that rely on hearing or hey! sight. Hey! That's important. Uh, 19, I believe. That's the owl. That's pretty good. It's plus one. 19. Plus three. Plus three. Oh, okay. 19. 19 total. Oh, 20. Sorry. 17 plus three is 20. Modified Math. 20, no Nothing. less. All right. Do you have your owl's perspective in this moment? Mm. Okay. So as you do this flyover, you have this wonderful sensation, first of all, that you've experienced before, but the thrill of it has yet to die down, that you are actually flying through the air as you share your owl's eyes. Oh, cool. But putting that feeling of elation aside, 
and relying on your analytical mind and the mind that you've developed through study. You notice that as they pass through shadows, the form of this member of Clan Aria shifts slightly. And it does not seem right. It does not seem natural. And it is something that you are unsure what it is. However, you're very confident that this is not something that just happens as people walk beneath the shadows of tree branches. So, you know, while everyone's discussing the owl and the spooky stuff, uh, she's just gonna like start talking over them, just totally oblivious. She's gonna be like, there's something strange about the, the one in blue, the Aria. I, I think you're quite right. Could I and I, uh, Good boy, boss. I believe that, um, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> I believe she might be, I, I don't know, perhaps fey or demonic in nature if I had to make a, a wild assumption and, you know, the owl's gonna slowly drift back and after a moment she's gonna blink back into her eyes as the owl lights back onto her shoulder. She'll she's slide down. part of Arya? She's demonic or fey in nature? Are we sure she's part of Arya? They said their clan leaders sent them, but we don't know where exactly they came from. And the other two seemed all right, but she was very uh, aggressive. And so she either has them bamboozled or they're in cahoots. I don't know if it's a good idea to let them go back to the library. I'm not entirely confident that uh, they have good intention. And based on what we've seen, the strange, uh, strange eyes, uh, I saw her shift slightly in the shadows. I can't even describe it. It's as if she became a shadow herself, like, like a drop in the water. Do you guys know of, in your studies, you know of any creatures that can do this? How oh dare do I? Uh, may I make a history check to see if any of this sounds familiar? Sure. Okay. That is a 16. 16. So, despite studying not always being your strong point, you definitely remember stories of beings that change their shape to deceive, and that comes to mind in this scenario. Yes. I believe they're called shifty whifties. <laughs> That's how I remember them, because th when things rhyme, it makes it slightly easier to retain, you see. Uh, it's a wizard's shifty. trick if anyone's interested. Shifty wifty. Shifty wifty. Shifty yes. yes. Look, now I'm all for one to go uh, bash in the skull of an Aryan, but uh, <laughs> I'm also a man of objective, and we were given a task. So it seems that we're at a crossroads. We could chase her down, find out what we need to do, or we could pursue. Uh, Going on to Kilkenny and dealing with that. I say we hold up, we are, we honor our promise that we have given. And it's up to them if their clan wants to hire a shifty 50. I'll send a message with Orbis. Oh, and she'll, she'll rumble through her bag before she finds, you know, a piece of parchment. She starts scribbling something. We might want to be careful because that library is full of paper and as I've learned on many an occasion, paper is flammable and inflammable at the same time somehow. I don't understand how that mm. works, but mm. that's what they told me when I burned down the West Wing. <laughs> Are you happy about that? It's good to know. I, I'm rather ashamed in truth, but I wrote back to my family and they're donating some money so it should be rebuilt in all haste. I believe. And of course, the information that you destroyed uh, will have to be regained in some way. But aside from that, I'm not burning any paper. I meant them. If they go back to the library and they have ill intentions, it might, uh, might be in our best interest to prevent them from doing so. They I have <laughs> other people. That's all I'm saying. I strongly dislike the idea of potentially losing the library. Library or people. How many people were from when, where we left? Mm -hmm. Was it like a, a well fortified location? Were there others or were we, were we basically? It's a, it's a reasonably big city. So there are other clan Malfior members or we were yes. like, okay. Yeah. There wasn't like an army per se. The forces of Thrush are spread a bit thin at present, but there are definitely other clan members there. Cool. As well as lots of people in the city itself. So if you were to send a message, let them know of this Celine character, and then we could carry on with what we were doing. That's a good idea. So she's gonna write uh, just a quick message, letting um, whoever know that um, Java, <laughs> Java, Java, Java. <laughs> Java. 
<laughs> Java Baba. Uh, I'm curious to see how we all spell that. <laughs> that um, uh, there will be a quiz. <laughs> the Aria clan member uh, to just keep a keen eye, maybe detect some magic on her or something like that, because she may not be what she seems. Um, and okay. then she's going to roll it up and tie it to Orbis's foot, and then she's just going to send him off. Okay. Bye. Uh, how long does your you have a psychic connection with your owl? Is that an ongoing thing, so or is it a spell-based specific? Uh, basically, uh, I don't remember the ranges, but you can command within a range. Mm -hmm. uh, the the familiar can go outside that range, but at that point, you can't communicate with it. So ideally, she'd be giving the command in the range, and then she'd lose track of Orbis until he eventually came back. Okay. All right. Well, you get the sense of Orbis flying along through the sky, and then suddenly kind of gets fuzzy and fades out as he passes beyond the range. I'm sure it's something you've experienced before, so you know what to expect. But you send your message back to the camp. All right. And so the four of you continue on your way, mulling over the events of the day, the way you were spoken to, the way that the other clan members reacted to seeing you and such. The day passes largely uneventfully after that, at which point you need to bed down for the evening and pass the night as part of your journey to the city of Kilkenny. So how do you guys approach your evening respite? Mm. Is there an inn somewhere about? It is a developed, but not uh, that developed of a road between these two cities. It's just a bit nature between the two. I suppose this is what they call roughing it, as it were. Have you ever spent the night outside of an inn? Oh yes, outside of an inn, of course, when I was, uh, when I was uh, at the dormitory at the, uh, at the, uh, uh, at the university. No, no, have you ever, like, gone to sleep in nature? Aren't we always surrounded by nature? <laughs> you fascinate me. I fascinate myself. <laughs> I know. I Petra just sits down, and you kind of see her like power down a little, and her eyes like get all squinchy, and she goes into like a weird meditative state. Fascinating. Uh, hey, dusk. Hey, excuse me, <laughs> Petra. It's Petra. Oh yes, but. <laughs> so when I made you. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I made it so that you were not needing sleep, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What if you, while out on all of your journeys and adventuring, what, it's been a, a year now since we've seen each other? Mm hmm yeah. Duh. A year. I'm sure you've seen many things out and about, yes? Very many things. So if the, the three of us were to take a, a nice little nap here and you just stay awake since you could do that, that wouldn't I be a problem? Into a into a, a low power state while still keeping watch. Duh. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Good. That's a handy trick. I would say we probably shouldn't camp out in the middle of this trail. Oh, should we not? Maybe just in the bushes. Oh, oh, we'll frown go off to the side, of course. Oh, yeah, I see. Is, is, there, I, is, is there any like patch of ground that we can d sleep on that's not Okay, a let bush. me help, okay. So Petra spent the last year like hermiting it and living alone in like a desert in nature. So she like, she just takes control and starts like building a little shelter for you guys. It's charming. You see her use her giant great ax on this tiny, tiny tree. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Make an attack roll. <laughs> Done. Foot reel. <laughs> Just gonna nat one this and cut something in half. Don't! Don't do <laughs> not, not too far <laughs> off. Sorry. <laughs> it's like a sapling, so it pins me. Eight! Eight? Yeah, it's a small tree. You cut it down. It's <laughs> but they almost miss. <laughs> yeah, not yeah. so badly that everyone knows, but you have that brief moment of, oh no, it's fine. Okay. No, you keep your cool. Totally confident. During all this, uh, Yuri is uh, enchanted by Boss and is going to pull out a silk handkerchief, like a frilly silk handkerchief. Oh, hello, Poochie. <laughs> oh, hello. Look at you. You're so lovely. I cast Prestidigitation to kind of clean some of the grease off of him. Oh, he's so adorable. What do you feed him? 
Nothing. Nothing? He must robot. be starving. No, he's not. Oh. Oh, dear. Come on, come on. Get, get, oh. what is that? What? But you want him to eat it? My hanky? Yes, mm -hmm. your hanky. Preferably not. I might need it if I need to blow my nose. Oh. Please, don't put it on his face. Come on. I'm sorry. This come on, boy. Lovely. I love dogs. <laughs> I'm going to separate him just a little bit and, and make him <laughs> lay down, and then I'm going to take my coat and kind of roll it up and lay up against him. There's a subtle clink, 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 clink as he wags his tail back and forth <laughs> as you cuddle up. Does, does, boss, does boss like Yuri? Does I he? Would say that, uh, he hasn't been um, calibrated to really show a lot of affection quickly, but he didn't growl at you. That's important. He, he, he didn't, yeah. You were not threatening. He's not a real dog. I, I crave uh, I crave validation, so any I can get is important to me. Yuri, do you have any extra coats? Extra coat? Uh, I do have my bedroll. Uh, I do have a, a small feather a mattress that I carry around with me at all times. Uh, you carry a mattress with you? Well, yes. I, I thought that was what we were supposed to do in my explorer's pack. Okay. I'll, also, I'll take one of those. Right. On Boss, there, there's a little latch in his backside that I open up, and there's a tea kettle in there, and I take that out. Oh, cool. Did you say back or backside? <laughs> back, back, backside. It's like in his like buttocks in his region. Okay, okay. Like a little in the rump. Yeah. Okay. See, little, Petra's little, eyes get a little wide. Rump kettle. And like, <laughs> rump kettle. <laughs> like, do I have that? <laughs> Reach back. Double check. <laughs> Not what I'm good. Good. Later update. But I don't offer them any yeah. of my tea. <laughs> I do have an extra set of fine clothes if you would like some extra warmth and drape around just a change of, uh, of attire. Yuri, would you mind changing my cloak to not purple? What? Maybe camouflage colors? Camouflage. Maybe you could, you could, so we're not seen? Oh, yes, yes. What would you like to be camouflaged with? Oh, I know. Uh, what if you're camouflaged with the color of flame so that if a fire starts out, you can be hiding in the flames? And I change it to an orange and yellow, just kind of like licking flames up. <laughs> no, I, I think I think darker, more subtle would do her. In, uh, so Sarzi is going to cast Prestidigitation and change her cloaks to like black and brown, just like subtle neutral colors. Ugh. Is that what camouflage is? Well, she's certainly blending in now. But I can barely see her. That's the point. What if I need to change it later? <laughs> I lift my goggles up to see what's happening. Just, ugh. <laughs> you have a sleep mask yeah. on. <laughs> the, the, the shades, I switch them down, and, and so it just, yeah, there's sleep goggles. Are you still sipping the tea at this uh, point, or is that? Yeah, it's just. I just want the image of you in the goggles, just drinking tea. <laughs> just Sleepy time. Pretending that I'm the only one there. Yeah. Uh. Nice. Sleepy time. Mm -hmm. Earl Grey, maybe. I wish, I wish Orbis would come back. I, I, I don't like being anywhere without him. I will wake you up if he comes back. Is, is he the only owl that you have connection with, Professor? Yes. Yes. We're, we're, we're very connected. It's, it's, it's a, I brought him here. Sorry. Of course you did. Yeah, that, that checks out. Well, <laughs> nighty boo. <laughs> ah, nighty Yuri's gonna kind of lay out on his on his uh, bedroll and look up at the sky. And uh, is it a clear night? It's pretty clear tonight. He's going to like look up at the sky, all the stars and everything, and cast the color of uh, cast prestidigitation to change his uh, robe the color of the night sky with all the stars. Oh, that's cool. And before I go to bed, using my magic tinkering, I'm going to take out just a, a small little box. I fiddle with it for a little bit, and then within a minute, it begins to make the sound of the ocean. Just some white noise. <laughs> and then it's going to just display some stars. Even though there are stars in the sky, it's just its own little uh, spinning array of stars. And this will uh, continue to go on until I make it stop. Mm. Sarsi is just like on on the uh, feathery mattress. She's just buried in a pile of clothes. Like it doesn't actually look like there's anything there. Only the perceptive will see a pair of eyes staring <laughs> out at the fake starry sky, kind of glinting between that and between um, Yuri's robes and everything. Before finally they just kind of shut, like a toaster. <laughs> 
like a toaster. Yeah, like, <laughs> like a cat in a heap of laundry. Do yeah. toasters have eyes? I don't know. Does like, yours not? <laughs> that's how my toaster's close. <laughs> well, you guys know how to camp. Yes. I will give you that. <laughs> the ocean sound white noise machine gently plays into the night while several... Well, oh. two different false representations of the night sky are portrayed for people's <laughs> relaxation. There's a real yes. night sky above them. It's got to be by my rules, my sky. And Petra, kneeling pose, you said? Oh, um, so I just read that I must spend at least six hours in active and emotionless state rather than sleeping in order to get all my stuff back. Okay. So um, she's actually going to go to her creator with the night mask on, she's just going to slowly get very close to your face. <laughs> you, I don't make any notion that I'm, I'm aware of your presence. Oh, <laughs> God. And I flip the little goggles open. Yes? Dusk? Uh, Petra? What's this? I was wondering if I could borrow your dog. <laughs> what do you need him for? I have to spend six hours in emotionless state, and I want someone keeping watch. He doesn't have to I, sleep. I, I nudge him. He lifts up. I knew I'd regret that. Next time, I'm going to put in a better battery. It'll keep you up all day, all night, never have to sleep. Until then, sure, yeah, you can watch. She gets really close to you again. Uh, okay, yeah, if you're taking notes for next time, maybe give me a nose next time. It would be good. Yeah, good. No. Then she takes Got the it. dog <coughs> and goes, goes, uh, goes on patrol. All right. Oh, I get puppy. What? Get puppy. Get the puppy. <laughs> the night passes. You feel a gentle ripple in your consciousness as Orbis returns and settles in next to you in this surprisingly <laughs> fluffy bed you've got going for, for roughing it. Petra wakes you up to make sure you know the owl's back. <laughs> Wake up! Owl's back! Oh. And then she puts the clothes on your face and just starts walking, patrolling again. Okay, thank Orbis you. Orbis lands next to you, starts to snestle in, flapping the wings around, turning a little bit, getting comfy. <laughs> so as he hugs him, like full-bodied hugs him, like a giant teddy bear. Aww. Aww. Uh, at that point, he nips at you affectionately and then just goes off into the night. Because, you know, owls. At this point, we'll take a brief intermission and bathroom break. Nap mm -hmm. break! Mm -hmm. Nap break. So, folks, we'll be back in ten minutes' time. Uh, we're going to excuse our... No, shout it out, man. Talk, talk to me. You're going to have the intermission thing cool. playing? That's great. So, could we interrupt intermission for a brief word from our sponsor, or should we do that right now? I ask the tech booth. We should do it now. Let's do it now. Cool. Okay. Do I have, you can say no, especially if you need to pee, but do I have a volunteer from the table to read a little something charismatically for all the folks at home. Well, I do have plenty of charisma. Oh, ho, ho. step right up, good sir. <laughs> it's my top stats. <laughs> it is. Oh. Sean's mic what? The mic went off. You broke it. Uh-oh. Your charisma it's broke All of the these mic. minor illusions Moving over and over. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Yeah, we should do that. All right, all you guys go ahead, go to the bathroom, or do whatever it is you want to do during our intermission. I'm going to read a little something from our sponsor, and then I'm probably going to go to the bathroom or get a little something to drink. So, thanks again for joining us this evening. Thank you for watching Tales of Throsia. We are delighted you chose to spend your time with us this evening, and we hope you like the show. The best ways to show your support, as well as how to be in the know about all the great shows going on at the Hive Collaborative, is to head over to Hive Channel 5, that's the numeral 5.com, Hive Channel 5.com, and subscribe. It is totally free, and it will help us to be able to continue to bring you more tales from the mythical lands of Throsha. 
Also, you can follow us on Twitch as well as subscribe if you're into that. And, excuse me, every time we get a new follower on our Twitch channel, the Cabbage Guy in Avatar The Last Airbender gets his cabbage cart fixed. Please pay it forward. Thanks again, and we'll be back with you in a few minutes. All right, and we're back. Thank you once again for joining us. Now that we've refreshed ourselves, let's just dive right back in. So, the five of you feel the morning sunlight pouring down over from the skies of Throsha as you wake in the morning. It is a new day. <clears throat> you are a good portion of the way on your quest to the city of Kilkenny. Is there anything you want to do before you hit the road? So before my eyes open, uh, I, I have a silk black top hat on. And on the band are two eyes. This is before you open your eyes? <laughs> yes. You okay. were sleeping Just in with a you. silk black top yes. hat? I, I cannot Carry on. Carry on. I forgot to mention that earlier. Yes. So a silk black top hat. Uh, on the band, there were two yellow eyes that slowly open and look around a little bit settling in just a blank stare before my eyes slowly, hmm, yes. And in my sleep, I cast prestidigitation to make a light musical sound that wakes me up. Almost not of my own accord. Yes, that was lovely. I can see why all of you sleep outdoors all of the time. Petra grabs her great axe. You hear that music? <laughs> what? What's Where is that coming from? Oh, oh, yeah, sorry, it's my, my tail has a bit of a mind of its own, don't you know? Okay, but can you turn off the music, because that we're, we're, thank you, thank you. <sighs> Sarzi's like, you know, like, like a hand kind of pops out from beneath the, the rags and the clothes and the jackets, <laughs> like a zombie, and it curls for a second, and she kind of, oh, oh, it's really bright out here. How do people manage to do something like this? I'm going to pour out the uh, old tea and then make the black coffee. Just same rump kettle that's making it. Oh, and, uh, thank same you. rump kettle. If thank you. Help yourself. Mm, mm, mm. All right. You drink a lot for someone so small. So you gotta, you gotta Your vital signs are increasing. Your heart rate. Are you okay? You drink a lot of that. I am more than okay. <laughs> okay. Really good right now. Here, take this back. No, it's not. Okay, it Pochi. My bad. Just sip my coffee. Petra will do all the packing up, making sure everything looks great, <laughs> just like it was before we left. We ready to head out. Here's your mattress and your jackets. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> Can I cast some gust just to blow all the dust and dirt off of it? Okay. Hmm. Yes, fresh as a daisy. Oh, no, lovely day. I'm going to cast prestidigitation on my robe once more to change the color of the sky with clouds and it's very nice. Yes. <laughs> How do I look? Wonderful, let's move. <clears throat> Smashing. The four of you make your way, continuing down the road to your task in the city of Kilkenny. In the distance, you see the shape of a broken wagon in the middle of the road in overturned earth. Oh, I've read this book before. We don't want to approach that. Don't we? Is it just off the side of the road or on the road? In the middle? It's kind of teetering on both. Okay. Yeah, let's make a wide circle around that. Well, it looks interesting, shouldn't we? Shouldn't oh, that's, that's we why we want to avoid it. Maybe some people need help. I'm yeah. sure they can find somebody else to help them. We, we have goals. Didn't you say that yesterday? We have goals that well, we need to do. It's possible that this uh, cart belongs to one of the 
inhabitants of Kilkenny. Yes. Perception! Perception check. Make a roll! Yay, perception! It's a game! Feel free! <laughs> it is a 15 mm-hmm. plus 4. 19. 19. Well, that wagon sure messed up, for starters. <laughs> Very messed up wagon. <laughs> but as you, you know, hone in and really try and make sense of what's laid out before you, you see broken pieces of wood, and in the overturned earth, you see the semblance of what look to be collapsed tunnels. Mm. What? This looks oh. like it might have happened just yesterday. Can I investigate the mm. tunnel itself and see if what made it a nature check? Sure, make a roll. Oh right. boy, that would be a 21. Nice. 21? All right, as you get down low, do you get down low or do you just bend over? You oh, I get me. down low and I'm like goggles, like three magnifying glasses in. Okay, so like we're talking mushed cheek in yeah. the dirt, looking down with the goggles zooming in and everything. As Boss you is see, like his <laughs> n- muzzles just In like, the darkness, the glinting of two yellow eyes looking back up at you. Shorty got low. Oh. <laughs> Why, hello there, beauty. Uh, me, me? No, <laughs> okay. the thing that me. made the whole... That's what it is, and I'm just oh. going to... This Casually is right. stand up. The ground beneath your feet begins to rumble as you hear a shriek begin to emanate. There we the go. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to need all of you to roll for initiative. Oh. Yay. Yay. Right up in my face. Yeah, you should not be there. Definitely should not be up there. All right, who has 15 to 20? Not I. We're in good shape, guys. Excellent start. Excellent start. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, 10 13. to 15. 13. Anyone beat a 13? 11. 13 is Yuri. 11 is Petra. I got a 5. Oh, I got a 7. All right. It's been still happier here, but. Ooh. <laughs> and low. Old Baird. All right. uh, Boss goes immediately after me. Uh, Yes. With the opening in the initiative, yes. (laughs) So let's everybody grab your minis. (gasps) Minis! Yeah! (laughs) Welcome to Tots, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, Tales of Throsha. Can you pass me my mini? Thank you. All right. We've got the hillside. Oh, Oh. the hillside? Don't say that. You're setting yourself up for disappointment. Okay. So we've got the side of the road. There. We've got a smattering of trees Ooh. over here. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Oh, see this. Oh, wow. That's nice. Stars oh. using trees. Yeah, I watch a lot of Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> and then the path itself <laughs> makes its way, kind of disappearing into the hillside. Oh. It's way down there. Okay. Here we have the semblance. Oh. Of a broken wagon. Oh, it's a hairy wagon. <laughs> a hairy Twinkie. Oh, <laughs> it's important to note as well. A certain mysterious black That's hole. That's the tunnel. So it's right in, in the road. The hole's in the road, not off to the side. That is. I'm going to need your mini there, Baird. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I was... You did say you stood up, so I won't lay you down for being prone. That's nice. <laughs> Can I place my, uh, my, my poochie? I yeah, would assume you'd have him yeah. with you. Oh, how lovely. Can I know. Show up? Right? Good taste. Ooh. We'll have to get some uh, see the top zooming in on this. Ah! Ah! Adorable. Oh my gosh. What the? I want to kiss it. I, w- I think it's going to kiss me. It just might. I Let's mean, roll and find out. It. Mm-hmm. it did call it beautiful. So. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> Try to charm it. <laughs> <laughs> Try to charm it. Yuri, seduce it. If you're a longtime it. fan of the show, you know how well that works out. <laughs> oh, no. Persuaded into a conversation. <laughs> I mean, All we just have to right. offer it stew, right? Okay. So, Baird. We're making a stew. With a surprising speed, it wriggles its way out of this hole and into Gah! the open. And it's going to make its multi-attack at you, one with its tentacles and one with its bite. Oh, shit. The first is a 12 to hit. Miss! All right, it lashes out with its tentacles and you dodge down to the side. (sighs) 
as it rears back its head and goes for the bite. That's a good noise. That is a 19 to hit. Ah, oh, my good old poochie poo boss will use its reaction to make you have disadvantage on that. Oh, all right. <laughs> Let's see. He sounds super concerned. That is a 23 to hit. Yeah, it hits. Okay. <laughs> boss, I told you better than that. Uh, I just want to say, for longtime fans of Ender the Hex, this is my first time rolling damage dice on this stage. Ooh. Oh, a little exciting, yeah. a little scary. How do you feel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here we go. It's nice. Ooh, it's a, it's a lot. Okay. I, I accidentally saw that. That is nine points of damage. Nice. Come as the creature shoots its head down and bites into your shoulder. Ah! No! Yuri. All right, oh. uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to creep up to, uh, to Boss and uh, whis whisper into its ear, Boss, Boss, do I have your consent? Do I have your consent? Yes, it's a yes, boss. you do, it has your consent. Right, I'm gonna reach into my pocket, pull out what looks like a pepper, open its mouth and shove it inside and cast Dragon's Breath. Oh, oh, oh. So now, oh, Boss <laughs> is a boss with a breath attack. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna say it is, oh boy, I don't know. Let's out. say that it is uh, fire damage. So uh, it can use an action to exhale energy in the chosen type in a 15 foot cone. So 15 foot cone of fire damage. A uh, creature in the area must make a dexterity saving throw taking 3d6 damage on a chosen type on a, on a failed save or have as much damage on awesome. it. Awesome, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yes, and uh, because I cast a spell, I must roll a d20, because I am a wild magic sorcerer. Ah, uh, yes, ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I'm gonna roll this guy. The big one. The big one. <laughs> That's an 18. Is that Ooh. good? That is good. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> depends on your perspective. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not standing next it, to you. It depends. Yes, all uh, right. So that is uh, my bonus action. As an action, I'm going to disengage and back up. <laughs> Pepper, run. <laughs> Eat this. All right, moving down the initiative order, we have Petra. Oh. Creator, are you in danger? Yes, of course. It's eating my shoulder. And you don't want that? I do not want that, Petra. Oh, you use my name. Okay, I help. She will run up here. She's gonna kind of like parkour off the wagon wheel cause she's mm. cool like that. Um, and she's gonna bring down that heavy great ax right on top of that worm's head. All right, attack roll please. Okay. It is a 2017. Did I hear 2017? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's it's a, a it was a good year because it wasn't 2020. <laughs> I, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, that's. Uh, that would be a 17. So either of those numbers will hit. Okay. <laughs> Yay! Go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> sure, I would love to. Uh, that would be an 8 plus 3. 11, 11. slashing damage. 11 slashing. All right. Cersei. All right. Um, Cersei is going to step forward just a little bit so she can get maybe a bit of a better angle. Twenty feet. And then she's going to um, she's going to like gesture a little bit, like she's typing something on a keyboard and mutter something under her breath. And when she does, two, three bolts, three missiles are going to shoot from her and hit the worm. Uh, magic missiles, as it were. All right. Um, I believe these just hit because that's what magic oh, missile does. Yes. Yeah. So you just get a one roll D4 damage. One d4 plus one. Oh, d4 is the that's pointy nice. one. Do you want another one? The caltrops. Yes. Oh, I've got one. Oh uh -huh. wait, wait. Maybe. I've got two. I've got three. Nice. Look how many oh, dice you have. So right. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. So that's going to do one, four, five, six damage. Is that with your plus ones? Uh, seven, eight, nine damage. Nine damage. Yes. Ugh. As you unleash these tiny bolts of just arcane energy, doof, 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 and they impact into the beast. All right. Sorry about Baird. your shoulder. Yeah. Ah! Well, um, I don't want to 
disengage and, and have it just attack me again. So I'm going to just pull out my heavy crossbow, which I know I'll have disadvantage on being this close, but I just got to shoo into it. Um, so I'm going to oh. fire that thing right into its, its belly. Uh, it's a 13 and a 3, so that'll be a miss. The first one was a 13? Yeah. Oh, no, but it's disadvantage because it's, it's 3. Yeah. Yeah, definitely does not connect. Okay, um, and then uh, it shoots right past my face. I will have oh. I will have boss expel a plume of flame from the chili that was placed in its gullet <laughs> and uh, spray that thing. So I'm so happy. Directing it in such a manner that I am not uh, in, in any way. I was going to say it's a yeah, little on the difficult side on account of you being in its mouth, but it's a pretty big beastie. So yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll give it to you. It can okay. do it. All right, uh, how does this breath weapon for the pooch work? So it is going to make a DC 14 uh, dexterity saving throw. Okay. Or it will take, that is eight, nine, 10 fire damage. Well, that was a five on oh, his dex yeah. save. Oh, right. 10 fire damage. As the metallic dog belches <laughs> forth a gout of pimento flame. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yes. And that was my <laughs> bonus action to command boss to do that. Awesome. So. Very cool. All right. Anything else on your go? Uh, no, I'm just going to stay there. I'm just going to stay there. Okay. All right. It's going to take its turn now. Using its multi-attack, it's going to try to attack boss because it just breathed fire on it and it did not like it. <laughs> that is a 17. Oh, Ooh. yeah, that, that hits him. No. Boss. Okay. Which is three poison damage, and then boss needs to make me a constitution saving throw. I think okay. it's resistant to poison. Um, I am immune to poison. And you are? No, bosses. bosses. Okay. Boss is immune to poison. Well, then he probably doesn't need to make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> well done, Poochie. <laughs> He's immune to poison. Is he immune to poison damage? Damage immunities. Poison. Being steel. Okay, well, this is one frustrated giant crawly thing as it <laughs> ineffectually attempts to attack this metal dog that breathes fire on it. That is so cool. It is now going to take its bite attack against boss. Rolling a natural 20. Oh, oh no! Oh. Oh. That's 12 points of damage. How much was the first one that you did? None, because oh, yeah, it was none. poison damage. Okay. And he's Twelve. like, I don't care. Shoot, okay. Boss, the original honey badger. He doesn't oh. care. <laughs> he cares nice. a bit more now. He got bit. Yeah. Yikes. All right, <coughs> Yuri. Are we back to me? Yep. Oh, oh, right. Uh, Yuri is going to... Yuri is going to prance towards the group again. Prance. Uh, and I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to cast Shocking Grasp. Uh, my tail's gonna twirl around my arcane focus and then attempt to strike this worm. Um, so I'm gonna make a melee spell attack with a plus six. Oh, it's not a touch spell? It is a touch spell, but I have to make a melee spell attack. Okay, and that is a 13 plus six for a 19 to hit. That will connect. Okay, Damage. so it's gonna take 1d8 lightning damage and can't take reactions until its next oh. turn. Oh, so all right. So 1d8. It takes eight max damage, so eight lightning damage. Ooh. Nice. Very can't take nice. reactions, so once again, I'm going to back up and say, I suggest you do the same. If you can, but. Ooh. Fair enough. All right, moving down the line to Petra. Okay, okay. Uh, she's gonna look at her creator for a second, and be like, I might have uh, got some upgrades since last time I saw you. And she's gonna pull back her great ax and hit it on the ground, um, casting Thunder Wave nice. at it. So it's actually a 15 foot cube, so I'm just gonna center that away from all my friends. So like you can the choose that the center yeah. is that far away from you? Yep. Okay, you're in good shape. Okay. Good call. Great. 
Um, he has to make a constitution saving throw. Bring it on, worm. Has to make a con saving throw. Is he shook? Uh, let me get that modifier up and find out, because it's important. Yeah, I don't know my save. That is a 16. Mm. I, it's probably to be honest, a winner. I, I don't know my save. Hang on. Oh, he's fine. Yep, he's fine. But um, he still takes 2d8 thunder damage. Or half of Half of that. Yeah. And isn't pushed. Okay, cool. 2d8. Can I use your d8? <laughs> That's so nice of you. Thank you so much. That's, oh. oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. I am <laughs> this so is, much. This is a new, it's a new class and race for me. I'm figuring it out. So, um, Petra is gonna look to the sky towards some celestial being, and she's gonna use channel divinity, uh, mm. destructive wrath. What Whoa. are you doing? So I'm going to deal maximum damage instead of rolling for thunder damage. Whoa. So, so does it still take half? it would be half? 16, I don't know. I mean, it I failed to save, so it would take half of maximum, which so is still eight. better. All right. Look at the sky. <laughs> you see what starts out as impression, uh, like I was <laughs> impressed by what you did, and then as soon as you called upon divine intervention, it just kind of turns to a, oh. Uh, Awkward. Mm. Uh, and then as her bonus action, because she see, sorry. And then as her bonus action, she is going to cast, uh, she's gonna look you right in the eye and then just like cast shield of faith on you. And I just imagine it <laughs> like a little, <laughs> like, I, like, I love you. And it's just gonna be like in a limousine when you can like put up the little, <laughs> that's like and shield like, of faith it, right now. Yeah. Oh. It's like, um, so, a shimmering field, and you get a plus two to your AC. Oh, nice. Oh, that's nice. I bet you're so happy about that. <laughs> and that's all. All right, Cersei. All right, so is gonna pull the staff off her back, and she's gonna move her hand around the orb on the thing, and then she's gonna mutter some words, and then she's gonna shoot her hand out, and nothing's gonna happen. And after a moment, she's gonna be like, and kind of tap it a little bit, bang it on the ground, and then try it again, and a ray of frost is gonna shoot from it, nearly <laughs> knocking her off her feet. But she staggers a little bit and shoots the ray. Uh, that's a 14 plus six, that's a 20. That will hit. Oh. All right. Damage. One D8. Uh, is this one a D8? That's not a D8. You get the hiccups. It's the double pyramid, as it were. Double pyramid. Uh, this? No, this. This one. This is a D8. Okay. That's a D8. There you go. <laughs> I don't recognize physical dice. I always play online. That's a four. <laughs> what an age we live in. Right? <laughs> I only recognize digital objects. <laughs> mm. All uh, right, so four damage? Four yes, uh, and its speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of its next turn. Oh, oh okay, so it's slow. Nice. Mm -hmm. Reduced by 10 feet. Nicely done. That's very but, good to know. Yeah, also, it can't take its reaction. Right that's right. Really? You know. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Baird. Baird is going to, noticing that it is uh, stunned by Petra's attack, He's going to move back. Petra, my attack. It was definitely Oh, wait, no, that was your attack. That was, was your attack. By my Yours was the thunder. Pantaloons. Sorry, you did the thunder. I just mm -hmm. gave you a shield. You um, giving me the, the, the okay. distance now, um, and then I will ready my crossbow, this time firing a magical bolt from it. Sweet. 17 plus 8. That's yes. That's going to be a, a 25 to hit. I'm afraid. Yeah, that totally hits. Okay. <laughs> yeah. no. What's the damage on that? Um, that is going to be a d10 plus Ooh. six. 12. 12. 12 piercing damage. 12 piercing damage. A heavy crossbow. So what makes this crossbow bolt different than the average crossbow bolt? Um, it is just, uh, it's one of my artificer uh, items. So it has... It doesn't need to reload, it shoots really fast, and it can just fire magic bolts if I don't reload it. That's pretty cool. That is really cool. All right, so this magical bolt strikes it in its underbelly as it rears up. And then... Um, the underbelly. I am, I'm, I'm gonna stay here because I could then protect you with, with my poochie. <gasps> you care about me? I mean, you did give me a shield and everything, so I guess I could return the favor. It's going to make a 
force empowered rend. A what? It's gonna bite it. Oh, okay. That's what we call it. No, it's not. It's not gonna bite no. it. No. <laughs> it's not going to. That was a two. That was a two? <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid that's not, that's not gonna cut through. All right, that takes us back to the top of the initiative order. We go back to the crawler, who at this point is going to burrow itself down into the ground. Oh, oh no. That's not good. Come back, little crawly. Son of a bitch. As it pops back up right here. I'm double checking myself. He's slower than he was a moment ago. Mm. So there okay. he is. Good job. However, this puts him right in the reaches. Well, I should say it puts Yuri right in the reaches of the worm. So, attacking uh, with its wait, tentacles. Wait. Before it makes its first attack roll, it rolls a two. Because of, um... <gasps> Divine uh, portent? Yes, divine Ooh. portent. Do you mean to tell me that you can just make him roll a two? I can just make him roll a two. What I sort of witchcraft is this? I'm a divination wizard. I can do anything. Divination you wizards, do folks. Better. They don't play around. What? She what? predicted a two would happen, and the secret is she just gets to pick when that prediction comes true. So yeah, he totally rolls a two. So it's like the tentacles what? rear up and then just suddenly kind of like go limp as they try to reach towards you. Oh, I see that you're <laughs> intimidated by my magical stature. <laughs> I imagine it's like getting up too fast and everything's like black. Like, what? Yeah. All right, and yeah, then the bite nice. attack again at Yuri. That is a 21 to hit. <laughs> that is. That is nine points of piercing damage, okay. as it now bites Ooh. your arm. Ugh! Horrifying sound. Have you ever <laughs> been bitten before? <laughs> no! And it's your turn in the initiative. Essentially. <laughs> uh, my turn in the initiative. All right, uh, I'm going to kind of try and uh, regain my composure a little bit as I, uh, as my, uh, the tail holding my arcane focus kind of uh, takes, takes control, um, it's going to access my metamagic as it kind of swirls in this little arcane pattern in the air. Uh, I'm going to use a sorcery point to use quicken spell. So when I uh, cast a spell that has a casting time of one action, I can spend oh, two sorcery points to change the casting time to one bonus action. So I am going to use that to cast Shocking Grasp once more as my tail whips around and slams into it uh, to make a spell attack. That is a 16 plus nice. 6 for a 22 to hit. That Woo! will connect. Okay, What's the damage on that? D8 of thunder damage. That's four thunder damage, and it can't take reactions until its next turn. Dang. All right, so you have cast a spell. Yes. So that's a cantrip. And then I'm going to... Oh, it was a cantrip. Yeah, cantrip. Okay. It has to be a level one spell. Yep. So, uh, five, Do you know what happened with that 18? Nothing happened. Oh, nothing happened. Okay. okay. Okay, so 30 feet away, and uh, tail still moving, I can also take my other action. Uh, I'm going to cast Chaos Bolt as the tail kind of pulls magic out of the ether of the air and out of myself, it starts to glow. I reach back and grab the magical power and throw it, and sure hope it connects and does some damage. Okay. So chaos Bolt. <laughs> I'm assuming this is a ranged spell yes, attack. Yes, uh, it's got a range of 120 feet. Uh, okay, I need to make a ranged spell attack against the target. Four, I'm going to use uh, my Tides of Chaos feature to gain advantage on one roll. I do have to roll on the, let's see. So, I can manipulate the forces of change uh, and chaos to gain advantage on one attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Once I do so, I must finish a long rest. Anytime I regain the use of the feature, uh, you can have me roll on the wild magic table to okay. see what that does. So I'm gonna roll one more time. Hopefully that hits. Yeah, that's a three. Does not All right. Hit. Go ahead and roll. This was a first level spell, correct? Yes, it was. Okay, go ahead and roll for wild magic. Mm -hmm. It's a nine. All right. Okay. Nothing happens. Okay. So, ineffectually hurling. Uh. <laughs> 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 it just plants into the ground and kind of fizzles out. <laughs> but no one saw it. I had a strong vibe of being a kid at Fourth of July lighting fireworks, and there's that <laughs> yes. one that just doesn't really work, yeah. and everyone's like, oh. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's my turn. Petra. Awesome. Okay, out of curiosity, because the dog's right next to me, I do know mending 
Does that heal like a construct? No. Yes, it does. Wait, for... <laughs> yes. Oh, hold up. No way. Yes. <laughs> No way! If the mending spell is cast on it, it gains regains 2d6 hit points. Oh, oh that's awesome! Whoa! Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's what? really cool. That's really that's cool. That's awesome. I would not have guessed. <laughs> All right, yeah. yeah I, I guess, guess that doesn't big. that doesn't apply to me, right? I don't know about Ooh. that. No. <laughs> that's on the deck. <laughs> it it's in the rules of the Steel Defender. Yeah, yeah the yeah. Steel, Steel Defender, Defender, but not the yeah, not, yeah, not Warforged. Which is, Defender. you know, the pooch with the tea kettle in his bum, not you. <laughs> that's different. A, yeah, yeah. Okay. You don't have a tea kettle. I'm sorry. Next year, model. But you do have a spout. You can put that over. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone takes 2d6 psychic damage. <laughs> As this song will not go away. Um, <laughs> why are you avoiding me? She's gonna uh, pat the dog on the head and run past it. Uh, and she is going to cast... So you did not cast Mending on the dog. I did not. Okay, just check. Sorry, sorry, so Broken. sorry. Okay. Um... I want to give this Thunder Wave a, another try, but I'm going to cast it at second level this time. Um, so a 15 feet? Mm, a 15 foot cube. Yeah, that will so. either hit me or her or both. Really? Maybe I can run. Jump over the dog! He's friendly, it's fine. Um, I'm trying to see. 5, 10, 15, 20. Excuse me. The creature right itself 25. is a. Twenty-five. Then, I, then I can at least cast it like that. Yeah, that'll work. That's Fifteen that. feet would go, cover it completely, and. Yeah. Because it's not a fifteen-foot. It's fifteen feet cube. Correct. Not radius diameter business. So cube is three squares across, three squares tall. Yes. Yeah, you're totally fine. Yay! Cast away. Constitution save, please, my good sir. Constitution save and throw. Have we named the worm yet? Squirm. We named it. Squirm. Squirm. That was a Squirm. constitution save of 18. Oh my gosh, this thing is crazy. Good night. Irene. Um, this thing bulked up before the fight. No kidding. Um, all right, well, it takes half damage again for a 3d8. Nine, uh, 14, so seven, seven damage. Seven damage. All right. Limb. Anything else? Bust. What? Uh, no. I yell at it. Concentration. You yell. Are you friendly? <laughs> Cersei. All right. Cersei is, uh, she, she kind of like looks a little shocked at um, uh, the war force suddenly in her face. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then at the sudden burst of thunder, so as she was casting her spell, kind of simultaneously, the burst of thunder startled her, and she kind of like yipped a little bit yeah. and yelped, and, and a bolt of ice came shooting out again, but instead of the one that it was before, it's a knife, and it lands and sticks inside the worm. <laughs> oh, well, good, you, you sure said hope worm. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and it whizzes past Petra, you know, like, clipping well, off one we'll, of her cords. We'll see what the dice say about that, so go <laughs> oh, ahead. Yeah, fair enough, okay. Uh, range spell attack. Oh. 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 oh, oh, no. It's an eight. It's an eight? Yeah, you're not going to hit Petra, but you're also not going to hit the worm. Yeah. It so goes this wild. ice knife that happens <laughs> almost without your volition <laughs> shoo, shoots off into the woods across the road. Doesn't it still explode? Wow. Uh, yes, it does somewhere, and it just, uh, wait, hold on, hold on. I think Ice Knife the still, target. like, explodes and does, like... Hit or miss the shard, then explodes. Oh, okay. So, oh, yeah, no. the target and each creature within five feet uh -oh. of it uh, <laughs> okay. must succeed okay. on a dex saving Ooh. throw. So a I'm dex? going. No! Wait, wait, wait. I'm so heavy. Uh, Sarzi predicted that you would get a 20 on this. So it's <gasps> what? No, 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 Choose how the game falls. <laughs> Why didn't you use that on my chaos roll? Yeah, don't, don't, you don't have to use right. that on me. Oh, like, all oh. right. Goodness. You only get two of those, correct? Yeah, I'm out. Oh. Okay, I mean, if you're gonna have two, it doesn't get much more powerful than two, two and 20. And 20. <laughs> That's really Good funny. Good night. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, like a natural 20, because you wouldn't even know our modifier, so you get a natural 20 on your deck save. Mama. Uh, Beastie Guy gets 16. He sa saves. Oh, 
All right, so he takes half damage. No damage. Oh, no damage. Yeah. Okay. So ice just like shatters all around them, but they're fine. It's, it almost goes, looks. <laughs> <laughs> it just crumples <laughs> down. What? I was going to snow today. <laughs> Baird. All right. Oh, wait, 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 uh, oh wait. sorry. Oh, go sorry. Ahead. One more thing. Orbis is going to launch himself off Sarzi's shoulder and oh, start cool. spinning circles around the worm, cast or doing the help action. Hmm. Okay, so this will potentially grant advantage to friends who get within that radius? Uh, I think, isn't it to any attackers, or is it, wait, okay, how or does is it help ranged attackers? Work? I believe if it's distracting them with the help command, any any attack gets advantage, but Any I, attack, you say? I will definitely mm-hmm. make help a... action, let me just double check this. You distract one creature within five years, don't mind if I do you know, it doesn't specify range to melee, so yes, it's distracting the worm as it flies around. Cool. Pretty cool. Pretty noises. cool. Feathers are flying everywhere, but as they fall off, does, they dissipate. Does the next <laughs> attack have to do that? Can, can I use that? Yeah. It says next attack. Okay, the oh, next okay. attack. Okay. Do it. So, while it's being distracted by the owl, I will plant myself on one, one knee and say, get back to the depths of the earth from once you came. 15 or it's a very heroic yeah. 11 15 plus 8 so that's a 23 that will seven. connect damage yeah. 13 piercing 13 damage. Piercing, piercing damage as it shoots a I kind of had a Chewbacca sound <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah okay they're special bolts from a galaxy far far away <laughs> they sound like that little spring thing on the back of a door <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Oh, okay. I was like racking my brain. What's it called, Chewbacca? It's a bowcaster. There's yeah, things we places. shouldn't say here. The mouse will come down on us like an atomic bomb. Okay, moving along. No, it's not. We're a non-for-profit stream. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's yeah, fine so here. Do your worst. No, 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 no. There are a few entities who actually exist in our universe who it's like a terrible idea to say that too. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Then, I'm going to then just a little bit further away. Mm-hmm. Good call. Good call. Um, then a uh, boss is going to come in closer here. And uh, with it still going fire breath, I was told it's a oh. minute long concentration. Holy shamoli. Wait, it's, so do you have wait, to wait, concentration? concentration? You took some damage, right? You want to roll oh, concentration right. for me? Mm-hmm. You're right. So that will determine what it does. Mm-hmm. I will wait. That's a Suddenly constitution. Is that right? <laughs> yep. Oh, it's an out one. <laughs> okay. Oh, safe to say that is. <laughs> Please. Yeah, your concentration oh. broke. I in can't the concentrate you... very long anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> that is rather appropriate. Thematically on point. Okay. So, uh, it was going to do that, but then it's like, <gasps> and it shuts down. In which case, he then uh, <laughs> he's still going to come over this way, oh, so that he's whoa, five five feet uh, from an ally. Hey, but then he's going to. Repair himself, and little uh, gizmos and gadgets of his magical mechanisms just start repairing up the chinks and <laughs> gaining two <clears> d <throat> eight plus two hit points back. Nice. Wow, that's a that's lot. That's like some iron giant shiz. Oh, oh that's a one. except I roll a one and a five, uh, six, seven. So he gets seven hit points back. Very cool. That's cool. So Petra, you hear these metallic tronk, 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 run up next to you as he stops, skids to a halt to stand guard next to you as you see these seams beginning to repair themselves. Whoa. And this metallic face looks over at you in pants with a big doggy smile. Oh. Woof. <laughs> we go back to the crawler. He's so cute. Who, when your bolt struck, a great gash tears through its flesh and this oozy yellow goo just flies out. No. Beautiful. All right. It's struggling to stay up. It's going to take its tentacle attack at Petra. Bring it on. That is a 17 to hit. Uh, my armor class is 17. Mm. It does get through. Ouch. All right. I need... A... Oh, I, no. Oh. I use its reaction. <laughs> Disadvantage. It's going <laughs> to jump in there and help you out. Uh-huh. Oh. And I'm also going to use the reaction <laughs> for, um, it's Four. called Wrath of the Storm. 
Um, so when a creature within five feet that I can see hits me with an attack, I can use a reaction to cause the creature to make a dex saving throw, um, and it deals 2d8 lightning damage. So it has to hit her to get that. Oh. Yep. My dog does nothing! It watches! <laughs> does it? Well, if, if you're going to hit if you wanted to do that reaction, or do you not want to get hit at all? I really want to try this thing. Okay. <laughs> My dog sits on its haunches. Okay. So it <laughs> does its attack, and I'm going to roll damage for it, because what you do does not cancel the attack. Correct. correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that gives you seven points of poison damage. Uh, I have a resistance to Three I'm, points of poison damage. Uh, Are you immune to being poisoned? I'm immune to disease resistant poison. Advantage against being poisoned. Okay, says. so you get to roll a con save for me with advantage. Ooh! Oh, nice. Nice. Uh. <laughs> 18. Yeah, 18 plus All right. uh, three. 18 passes, and then excellent. this guy's rolling a deck save because you're doing a thing. Yeah. Tell us again, it's been a minute. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, so Wormy kind of like touches me and it's kind of like, you know when you shuffle your feet across the carpet? I do And you know get that. all that electricity and you're like, Voop! that's essentially what's happening with him. Very he touches powerful. me and I've just, my mechanical body is so full of energy. The minute he touches me, it's just gonna zap him right back. So like a thick shag carpet, let's say. Yes. Okay, a yeah. deck save. A deck save. <laughs> All right, that is a twelve. Oh my gosh! It takes two d eight lightning damage. What? <laughs> wow! That is quite the shot. That's awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. All right, roll two d eight. Yes. Five. Eight. Eight damage. Eight total damage yeah. to the worm as it tries to bite you and you shock it back. Petra, finish him. <gasps> oh, woo! Woo-hoo. All right, so he reaches down his tentacle right on my shoulder and she goes, not today. And she just reaches up and grabs it right back. All the electricity built up into her just goes into this tentacle. <laughs> you can see the skin shivering up on its face and then it just explodes. It sure does. <laughs> Casting gut to skew. Yay! And yellow Woo! goose plays across, covering you and boss. You are spared. And there on the hillside behind you is like the silhouette of Petra <laughs> in yellow goo. <laughs> and it doesn't spray out far enough for anybody else. Thank goodness. Well done. Oh, well done, champions. That was nice. fun. <laughs> and we fade down. What I hope was good action music. It's difficult to hear on our end. Okay, yeah. that's all right. That was, that was abhorrent. Well done, that was abhorrent. I wonder why he was after the wagon. Can we do a perception check on the wagon? Sure. Are there any people in it or anything? There is a two, <laughs> plus four. You can go back to your previous thought of, that's ah, a messed up wagon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no one in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's about what you're going to get with that roll. I would like to, if it is all possible, um, I'm going to step up over to where the carcass of this uh, creature is and see if I can abstract some of the poison in a vial. Is that any uh, possibility? Is there anything left for me to there's take from it? There's plenty of goo around, so absolutely. Thank you. Stopper in my jacket. (laughs) (laughs) I love how he makes his own sound effects. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite parts. We're going to have to get you like a book of fabric swatches so you can make the in the pocket. (laughs) 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 Logan's his own fully fully set up. Hold on, I got something for that. Let me get my mayo jar. (laughs) It's got a pair of boots on the table. (laughs) Is everyone okay? Anybody get hurt? A little bit. Is it? Hair in my my jacket. Not your not your jacket. Are you hurt? Oh, yes. I see some bone. You see some bone? Come over here. No. I'm going to. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll let this. No. How hurt are you? Uh, there. Oh wow. If you were to quantify it. <laughs> if I were to be very specific, it would be nine hit points. <laughs> As the cleric? 
uh, I'm going to call boss over, um, and as he sits down in front of me, oh, who's a good boy, yeah, who's a good boy? And then uh, my boot, uh, the back of my heel, I remove, like, the sheath on it, and it looks like a little gas pump pedal. And I start uh, pedaling, and there's a generator on my back, and I take out a little, uh, like a, um, what do you call it? The, the, the spigot thing? Yeah, and I just start repairing it using mending, but it's not mending because it's not magic. I use my, my tools. And I uh, am going to repair yeah, science. 2d6. Science! Science! <laughs> science! Science! Six, seven. Oh, seven hit points back. All right. At this point, is he fully recovered then? He is fully recovered. Okay, That's I feel really bad. Awesome. Come here. Come here, pretty <laughs> boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Just if it's, if here, it's does this hurt? <laughs> there you go. That's she good. uses her electricity to like... It's like cauterizing the wound. I don't know. Spooky. I like it. It is spooky. You only gain... <laughs> I'm gonna come by uh, and go. say, I appreciate what you did there for a boss, so let me return the favor. And I take out uh, another strange looking contraption. It has like some tubing and uh, some kind of goo, and I and I oh. mend at your coat, and it makes your, uh, your clothing repaired. I, guess. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't give you any of <laughs> <laughs> Mending me with goo? Oh, I'm so. But it's strange I... because the goo turns into fabric, and it like. Oh, cool. Well, for Yuri is more. <laughs> Yuri's more I excited about that than getting healed for six hit points. It's like a, it's like, like magic. Yeah, it's yeah. like nanobots, <laughs> and it becomes a fabric again. Cool. Science. Yes. Hurrah! Before you said that part, I pictured you just putting a big patch of glue <laughs> and like just Elmer glue. Your jacket. <laughs> and the really stylish Thanks. one just has like a glue patch. <laughs> Yours is still cooler, but that's just what oh, I thought of. Oh, thank you. That's smashing. Yes. Uh, Yuri's gonna reach down and just kind of like do the boo, good boy, did you enjoy your treat? Yes, it was tasty, eh? And it gives you a, a lick. It's complete metal. Just, just <laughs> yeah. oh. like a cheese grater on my oh. face. <laughs> you have like a semblance of motor oil going up the side of your face a little bit. <laughs> Sarzu's just gonna go ahead and cast prestigitation to clean that up. Doesn't oh. <laughs> Can't really look at him when he's got oil slicked up his face. Do we want to ride in the wagon? I think we can. Do you want to help me fix it? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Take the left side, I'll take the right. Well, so do we need to ride in the wagon? How close are we? You were told that you would arrive today around nightfall, or at least approaching nightfall. Mm. So a day of walking ahead of you. I guess if you could fix it. Yeah. Yeah. You have very short so legs. I do have very short, I mean, I could just ride on your back. You said I, I don't feel like anything, right? That, that yes. was a one-time thing. I'm not... Right, you, of course. I'm no, getting yeah, a hole in my boots. I'm proficient with thieves' tools, tinkers' tools, smiths' tools, woodcarvers' tools. Wow. I can could work you on this. carve us a wagon? <laughs> carve us a wagon? From <laughs> some <laughs> beech wood that I found. <laughs> some <laughs> wagons. <laughs> worm bone? Uh, oh, gross. <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, yeah, I'll start working on this wagon, see if we could get the axle fixed, put on a little bit of a new wheel here. I will just use magic. <laughs> <laughs> I love this dynamic. Okay, so the two of you, using a combination of handiness, know-how, practical tool application, and magic. <laughs> mend this wagon, then it's a wagon again. I say, Professor, were you impressed with my, uh, with my acumen as a wizard? <laughs> <laughs> you... Uh, uh, <laughs> I was impressed by your spell casting. Oh. Yes. 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 Oh. Your, your magic. Yes. <laughs> I think words of affirmation are his thing. I, yeah, I know, oh, I know, I know, but uh, I, I don't know why he always asks me in particular. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't know. You, 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 you cast it, but it's, 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 it's not. He doesn't understand. It's, it's not the same. It's not like. Oh, butterfly. He, did, he didn't learn it. It didn't. I don't know where it came from, but it didn't come from what he thinks it did. Right, we all have our. I am an weakness. excellent wizard is what I'm gleaning from this conversation. Welcome back to the conversation. That's yeah. exactly what we were saying. <laughs> okay, so who's gonna pull the wagon? 
Boss? Come on, boy. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm going to hitch up Boss to the wagon. What's Boss Boss's strength wagon? modifier? <clears throat> uh, 14 plus 2. Plus 2. You know... Oh, no, I see uh, a thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> brewing. <laughs> Uh, Yuri's gonna sit in the back of the wagon and sneeze, and as he sneezes, accidentally cast Gust, which kind of <laughs> propels us along a little bit. <laughs> oh, look, I helped! My magics! <laughs> I can do it again! <laughs> Achoo! <laughs> Is Gust a cantrip? It's a cantrip. <laughs> oh. All right. I'll Boss dutifully. I will help. Yeah, it's wagon. a trudge, but hold I will help as well. It's good for humanity, so I will I, help. That was um, that was a little specific, a little little exclusive. I, human, humanity only applies to one. Uh, yeah. I, oh, well, I'm, I am her creator. I mean, this is just I don't know. It's just really it's awful. It's good for the world. I yeah. I, I I suppose. I mean, the words were already said, but I. I guess I am. <laughs> we Petra don't have time for this political correctness. <laughs> Let's get <laughs> moving. She moves. All right, so between Hurrah, a mechanical dog, a mechanical person, and then a magic man sneezing, <laughs> propelling the back of the wagon oh, forward. Sure. Orbis is also helping. It's sure. sitting on, on a, a boss's head. Kind of chitters happily, flux his feathers. Oh. He's moral support. Yeah. For the most part. There you all go. All right. He's helpful. That <laughs> makes all the difference. Then the wagon really <laughs> yes. starts to move forward. <laughs> Nice. As you trip. make your way down the road. The three of us in the back can have tea. <laughs> so as he has more coffee, <laughs> crush it. All right. Some hours pass in the mid to late afternoon. In the distance, you see a small village. And then the small village turns into a town as you draw closer, because that's how things that are far away look when you first see them. <laughs> and then as you get closer, you begin to see people bustling about. Okay. No, it stays at town, sorry. Uh, yeah, so you begin to see the people moving about their business, and your wagon pulls up into the town of Kilkenny. You see people moving about doing their thing. Do you continue in on your wagon, sneezing as you go? No, no more sneezing. I think Are you we're good. Sneeze. Are you out of breath? Are you Pull out my silk handkerchief. No, go I'm, ahead I'm and roll me a con save. You've been sneezing. <laughs> wow. 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 sneezing. I mean, allergy season, am I right? Seriously, that's the bane of my existence right now. <laughs> that's not <that> one! <laughs> oh, no! Okay, two things. First of all, I need you to take Five points of chapped nose damage. <laughs> oh dear. Because <laughs> that just worst. hurts at this point. Yeah. Okay, so five points of damage there. And then the other thing oh, is I need you to. I'm dead damage? serious. <laughs> oh no. You rolled a nat one. Yeah, and then I need you to roll on the wild magic table because even if it's a cantrip, you've just been magicking and magicking and magicking. That's fair. So you're rolling on the table. This is not to see if it happens, it's happening. You want me to actually roll on the table or roll on the box? Uh, roll on the box is fine. Then. D100. Oh, that's a 43. 43 Fireballs. on the wild magic table. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't say that. For the true. next minute, you can teleport up to 20 feet. Oh, hey! <laughs> right, as a bonus action on each of your turns. So for 60 seconds, you are poof, okay. poof, poof, anywhere you want to go. <laughs> Yuri gets ready to sneeze one more time. And then bam. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd he go? What happened just now? You, uh... Does it taste purple in here all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> and then 20 feet away. It's like pinballing Yuri, from one place to another. why are you in another. the tree? Get I, down! I don't know. Get back in the wagon, you're causing a scene. All right, I'll try and sneeze my way there. <laughs> and sneeze into the wagon. <laughs> You've my. definitely attracted I'm, the attention I'm of the local yeah, townsfolk. Like, what, what are they seeing when they look at us? What, Petra puts up her hood. What's the general so atmosphere of the people the the watching as we enter? Well, as they saw on. a wagon rolling into town, it seemed like you were generally ignored. People looked at you, but then there was this like brief little like burst that would happen every couple feet, <laughs> and then the sound, and then there's this man that's now going poof, poof, poof in the vicinity of the wagon. You've definitely drawn some eyeballs, so there's just like the questioning, what's going on? Okay, time to leave the wagon. Okay, stop sneezing. Stop, <laughs> stop, hold it, hold it. Hello? No, no, just be quiet. 
Uh, what is the atmosphere here? Are they like downtrodden? Oh no, it's uh, it's it's a reasonably prosperous, average seeming town. Like this under, is a place you could live. They've been under attacks recently. There have been, you know, that yeah. there have been attacks. That a few people have been killed. A few people have been kidnapped. Uh, and that the culprit they've had a difficult time describing as reports are varying. Uh, Humanoid figures is about the only thing that seemed consistent. Made of metal. Can Sarzi look around for like a guardsman's office or anything like that? Perception. All right, let me just real quick check what my perception is. Oh, 22. Oh, yeah. Nat 20. Nat maybe. 20, okay. Wow. Here's your map of Kilkenny. No, okay. <laughs> no, so you see a guardsman who was just walking around the corner with a spear who's watching this happening, mostly you, um, going on, and he's making his way over. He's not necessarily pointing the spear or anything. He's just coming to see what's up. Oh, uh, excuse me. She's going to leap out of the cart land heavily. Oh, oh uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. We are looking for the guardsman's office or any any uh, authorities we can speak to. We've been sent by... Uh, uh, Not Java. 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 Mm-hmm. We've been sent by Java to come assist with your problem with the uh, machinations. Ah, uh, yes. So, oh, all right. Uh, well, you'll probably want to speak to the mayor then. Uh, he's in the town square at present. It's just over yonder around the corner. Follow the road and you should be able to find it. And you see his face contract slightly as his speech slows at the end of his sentence as he looks around. Everything all right? I certainly hope so. Rest assured, we are a group of professionals. We're a professional team sent here distinctly by Java in order to take care of your problem. We will not let you or your town down. I'll accompany you. Oh, thank you, my good man. <laughs> okay. And you see him look down the street and call, Oi! Well, do we really And two need... more guardsmen come to walk with you. Mm, is this really like necessary? This is a lovely procession. I don't think. like cities. We very just want to make sure you find your way to the mayor safely. Very accommodating. Uh, very accommodating. <clears throat> Insight check. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Ooh. Oh, baby. That's a big old 22. <laughs> if it had been a normal size 22, I wouldn't have told you much. Mm. But in this case, um, nice. so there's definitely some condescension going on. He's doing his I'm going to keep you pacified speech, which he's very used to giving in his profession. He's attempting to play that angle. Okay. All right. I'll go but, along with it. Well, Sars is going to keep complaining like, do we really have to have so many people? I, you know, I would like to speak to your uh, guard captain, please. Uh, the mayor outranks him. If you'd like to complain to him, oh, I, I will certainly be complaining. What's your name? Oh, I'm Stan. Stan. Mm. All right. And what about Stan, these the two? God's man. Stan the Godsman? Stan the Godsman. And these two? Oh, new recruits. I'm not sure. You don't know your recruits' names? I didn't recruit them. All right. She's gonna write something down on a piece of paper. I'll keep that in mind. It, it's Reginald. That's very good, Reggie. Now keep it to yourself. <laughs> Hi, Reggie. Hi. I'm going to put a hand on Stan's shoulder, uh, the hand with my signet ring of uh, the Prothero family, or the Prospero family. Say, I do so appreciate you treating us with such dignity. I'm not accustomed to such towns out this way. I've never been this way before, so any assistance you could give us would be very much appreciated. He lets you give this speech, but the moment you put your hand on his shoulder, he grabs your hand yep. and just watches very intently. He says, we're happy to be of assistance. Shall we make it on our way? Yes, please. He releases you. Um, I totally forgot here. Uh, as we're walking, I'm going to remove the letter to the mayor that we mm-hmm. were given from. Your letter of introduction that Java gave you. Uh-huh. I'm saying that this is for his or her eyes only. Well, then why are you brandishing it now? Well, just letting them know, like, we are here on official business, so. All right, they walk you down the road. (laughs) They look at the letter. They don't take it from you. All right, let's make sure you get it to the mayor then. And sure enough, you make your way into the town square. There's a small fountain. There's people selling fruit, and there's children playing. There's people bustling about the square. 
but there is a bit more of a tense mood as you make your way into the square as people begin looking at you. The guardsman calls out to the mayor, oh mayor, and a man standing by the fountain who was discussing something with a small group of people turns. His garb is simple enough, but still slightly more refined than those of around the, the, the town. Very clean, very well kept. And he looks up and he says, what is it? What is it, Stan? This group here says they have a message for you from Java. Ah, I was expecting her correspondence. Yes, please. He takes the letter and he opens it up and he reads it and he furrows his brow. Maybe we should have read the letter before we offered it over. It had a seal. Hmm. Oh, it did yeah. have a seal. Okay, hmm. never mind. Very well. Stan, you know what to do. And he folds the letter and begins to tuck it into his pocket. And Stan calls out again. And seven more guards begin to pull in from the various corners of the town. And the mayor says, arrest them all. Especially make sure that these two are separated. What? This is your fault. I did not. Why would you do On such a thing? On what grounds? He pulls the letter back out of his pocket and opens it up and holds it up for you to see. Upon which you can read in Java's hand, Dear Mayor, this is the man that you asked for and this is the metal being created by him. I send them to you as a gesture of good faith, showing that Clan Malthior stands with Throsha. I hope that this ends all of the violence in your village and that things return to safeness and calm. Regards, Jaba. <sighs> and that's where we'll end no! our adventure oh! of the evening. Oh. Jayla! <laughs> I looked on. I looked down and my hand was just in a fist. <laughs> oh. Cool. All right. So this okay. is your fault. Hey! <laughs> it sounds like this is your fault, this metal your creatures fault. going around causing problems. <laughs> yeah. No, was it me? <laughs> did you make other metal creatures? I did not, other than boss. Uh, so, oh, sorry, yeah. thanks it's for tuning in down. tonight, folks. <laughs> Uh, hopefully you enjoyed yourselves. We're really glad you took the time to hang out with us. Thank you so much for watching. Um, at this point in time, we just want to say thank you once again to the Hive Collaborative for helping us to put on this show so that we could share it with all of you. If you want to help support us, if you like what we're about and you want the inside track on all the cool things going on at the Hive Collaborative, please go to hivechannel5.com and subscribe. Totally free of charge. We also most graciously accept and encourage, if you're uh, able, to follow us on Twitch and subscribe there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. And again, please keep an eye out for upcoming details on the Kickstarter supporting Season 4 of Enter the Hex. And this is the part where in week's future, I'll have a cool closing catchphrase. <laughs> I've, I've got one. Can I, can I try it out? Let's try it out. It's a new show. Support us on Kickstarter. It's a nat 20. Hey! <laughs> Freeze frame. <laughs>